Michael D. Leonardo, also known as Mikey Scars. The government says he's a high-ranking member of the Gambino crime family. <laughs> Which would be great. The live would be should be very robust. <laughs> I can't wait for it. Uh, but it, 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 again, there's so many points. These are hypotheticals, but we have a preponderance of the evidence based upon these tapes, based upon what Gravano is right now, how he acts. He's always been this way. He was just suppressed by being an associate. He had to act. Then a wise guy had to act, but he sees it, it keeps going up. The captain had to act. The administration had to act. The next one, he would have told everybody else how to act. Okay. All right. This is my concluding point. Um, but I would say the grade's important to me because you are the expert. I am a reader and I'm doing a research. You're an insider. So you're on the battlefield. I'm reading the book about guys on battlefields. So it's a different perspective. All right. So I got to kind of set this one up a little bit. Because this, my sixth point relates kind of back to my first point. Um, uh, well, my second point about, you know, John can't kill Sammy because he ends up looking like gas pipe. Um, and he has problems with the commission and all these things that he can't. So... On this point, <clears throat> I would say Sammy was one of the most, the biggest and most powerful underbosses of his era. The only exception I would make is probably Fat Tony. He was super powerful for his time, one of the most powerful ever, but that power could not have trans, wouldn't have transferred into the boss position after killing John because I don't think he could have went to the commission and said, Hey, I got it. I had to kill this motherfucker for these reasons. And he killed Paul. I think that chin looks at him in the same basket that he looks at John, you two young, dumb motherfuckers. You guys don't know this life. You guys are, you guys blasted your way in. You guys are not even really schooled in this thing. You don't understand this thing. I don't want to sit on a commission with a motherfucking Sammy the Bull. I want to sit with Carlos Driver. I want to sit with a guy who knows this life. This Sammy's no good for this life like John's no good for this life. So while Sammy was the big man in the Gambino family, a big influence in New York, he was only that in his position that he was in. And you ain't taking John out, taking the Gambino family and holding on the power. I think that you kill John, the commission immediately kills Sammy. They immediately get rid of Sammy. There'll be an all out assault on Sammy. And they say, Jimmy's gonna be the guy. Chin can't put Jimmy there with Sammy sitting there as, where does Sammy go? You can't take out John and leave Sammy alive and put Jimmy in. You, it can't happen. So here's my concluding point. They both couldn't kill each other. They both, their survival was contingent upon both being alive. Occam's razor. John didn't kill Sammy because John couldn't kill Sammy. Killing Sammy kills John. The end. Very good. I disagree with some of it. Okay. Uh, don't forget, Sammy was um, in an administrative position very short. Fat Tony was a legend, has been there up, up in those administrative positions and a captain for a very, very long time. Uh, reputations are completely different uh, with Fat. I'm not contradicting you. I'm just saying the uh, the magnitude of the man. Tony, Fat Tony's a legend to be there forever. Gravano's, his, his legacy is uh, two things. Killed 19 people, which he spreads about, 
and uh, Ratna and John Gotti. Fat Tony has a whole different legacy. So, all right. Well, there's the other point. Um, I, as far as Sammy not killing John because they need each other, I'll go to your latter point because I forgot the other point. Um, but my other point was the Jimmy Brown. Jimmy Brown can't hold the family with the back and the chin with Sammy still alive. Gotcha now. All right. So this is this is Sammy has a relationship with Guest Pipe. He has a relationship with other guys and other families, right? Sammy goes to the commission. He goes to Chin. If they last in the street, if there's no case, tape case, right? He goes to the commission. Holding, holding hands with Gas and Vic. Who bring them in? Don't forget Gas and Vic, Tony Ducks. They're the ones that go out and kill all those motherfuckers that kill Paul and Tommy, right? They walk him in and say, guess who we got? Sammy wants to say something. John's out of control. He's killing all the guys. He's killing my guys. He makes the case. Chin goes, 30 seconds. He, he just gives that pregnant pause. He already got the answer. And I said, yeah, Sammy, go ahead. You got our blessing. He goes and bangs John out. He would have. I believe that's the scenario that would have happened if there's no pinch in uh, 1990, December of 1990. Now, I agree with you. Sammy don't last between six months of the year. They bang him out. The commission bangs him out. They come to a meeting. It's, it's over. Gas probably kills him easily. And then they give the family to Jimmy. No question. And you said that so eloquently about how Chin would sit down with a guy like Jimmy Brown, uh, elder statesman, goes back to the of Carl and pure Cosa Nostra, the way he handled business, right? And handled that family. Jimmy would have made a perfect boss. He wouldn't have liked me at that point, but he would have made a perfect boss. Um, so I agree with all of that. I agree, agree with most of, most of everything you said there, except for those two points. Um, now, I'll give you my reason why he don't die. Goes back to the name we just mentioned, Chin and the Lucchese guys. That is, John knows that is never going away. In the back of his mind, they kill Frankie the Chico. They blew him up. He don't know where it came from. But there's tapes with Bobby Manor. Quincy of the family. Long standing, long history. Tough guy, no joke. Serious guy. It's it, it comes out of not a soldier's mouth, not an associate's mouth, not a captain's mouth. It comes out of the concierge of the family's mouth. Bobby Manor never would have spoke like that unless he got permission from Chin. And who's Chin? He's the commission. Right? So John knows this. John has all the guys we named gone. His brother, Johnny Canadia, Angelo Ruggiero, Funzi, Arnold, and all the rest of the guys that are off the street or dead. And not coming home soon. These guys got huge sentences, right? Not gonna, they're not going to be on home in three, four years. John needs Sammy as a balance and as an asset, a huge asset, just in case somebody else gets clipped in the family and they got to go for Chin and anybody else that's coming in for them. It's as, to me, that it's as clear as day. He needs the evil man. He needs the devil. Even though he knows he's in trouble with this guy. He still knows he needs him. Don't forget this conversation is, is supposed to be between him and Frankie, not him and the world. He's ruminating to Frankie. He's trusting a guy and, and, and getting out, throwing up what's bothering him. But he's still laying the groundwork. If I if I really see this guy's coming strong, Frank, I, in, in so many words, I got to kill this guy. Look at the case I laid out. When John's mind, he can't. The interfamily struggles, the outside family's looking at him uh, if he kills Sammy. But the more important thing is, and Sammy's going to love this, he needed his, Sammy and his crew to go to war. 
if he so choose. That factor, if he takes Sammy out, it's so easy to get job. It's so easy. There's one less powerful crew that at this point, they don't think Sammy could ever be compromised against John. Of course, nobody knows the inner feelings of John's mind at this point. His disdain and distrust for Garano. So, in some in substance, it all comes back to Sammy's uh, ability and his crew's ability to insulate John uh, as a murderous faction that would be in an instant retaliate against any and all. And that's why John needs Sammy Gravano. He needs that guy. Just like Paul would have needed Roy DeMeo, Nino Gaggi, et al. His crew fell apart around him. Frankie DiCicco defected. If Frankie don't de defect and he brings, he talks John down, all goes back to Paul and tells him, John's gone. So once you start crumbling from inside, John says, who's going to kill me? Me? He had all the killing crews. Most of them are gone. The biggest one at this point, Sammy, and he knows he has a problem if he hurts him. With outside, with Chet, with anybody else. So by that reasoning, wouldn't you agree that John, to accept that narrative, John would have had to conclude, I don't think he's going to move on me. Because when it, if it was John thought his life was in danger, and that was my point, that they both can't kill each other, that John, John would have had to conclude, right? I don't think he'll come for me. I don't think he'll go quite that far. Spies in the camp. All those guys going to see Sammy. All those things that he's, he's listening, he's got his ear to the ground on with Sammy right now. If he thinks he's going to get him, yeah, John would act and, and, and deal with everything later on, of course, of course. But now his eyes are wide open to Gravano. He's in a bad spot. But it's, it's easy to, to appease Sammy because John's got the case. Sammy has no case. If John gets convicted, he can't get killed. He's in prison. Sammy's going to run the family. Now, John, if you don't get banged on a big sentence in that case, and there is no tape case, right? If you don't get, he comes home. How far did Sammy grow? How far did Sammy say, I could take this family? We see Sammy's ego at this point. How do we know Sammy don't get clipped if John gets convicted in, in the O'Connor case? That was the third case, I think, right? No, it was the Willie Boy case? Well, yeah. So either way, either case, John has a huge conundrum. The reason why he don't kill Sammy is because the chin, because he needs him for that. So what's going on in Sammy's mind? Is Sammy, so like the point I made, Sammy knows he's toast without with a dead John. With a dead John, does Sammy... I guess what I'm saying is if you're saying John knows I can't kill him, do you think Sammy's active? Because Sammy said, I never planned on going against John. I never would have killed my boss. He said it on Bet David. He said it other places that he even said to Patrick, make me your underboss. Watch how happy I am. What was Sammy thinking? Was would Sammy was Sammy thinking at that time? I should kill this motherfucker. Yeah. He said he could. He could down the road. Yeah, absolutely. He believed he could run that family. No question. And he could have. If there wasn't the killing of Paul stuff and the, and the, and the sanction uh, hit on those guys for whoever was involved in killing Paul and Tommy, uh, he might have been able to go to the commission and say Paul stepped down. He advocated and stepped down. And John got the family and John was killing everybody. You may have been able to go there. That's another way hypothetical. But uh, no, Sammy knew he could be boss. And he could have. 
What he made a good loss, terrible. He would have. He, you know, who knows how many more bodies there would have been. The guy liked to kill. The guy was something. There's something wrong with this guy. He still likes it. He still likes to talk about killing people, watching them die. The guy's there's something wrong with him. He's. If he was a dog, what that was hurt, he would have needed the stepper shot. Was Sammy, was Sammy Cosa Nostra, and I don't, and I want to preface this that I don't know that I wouldn't agree. I know we disagree on this, but to me, killing a boss isn't anti Cosa Nostra because they all did it. <laughs> a lot of bosses killed their boss. So if you can just minus that for the second, and his value system, his thinking, was he a Cosa Nostra? Was, was he Cosa Nostra and his person and his thinking? I, I'll give you one outside the violence. What did he say recently? He was getting blowjobs from Flinzer Wild's girlfriend, an acting boss of the Genovese family, bragging about it. I, I mean, just that there alone, is that cause an Austria? I mean, he attacked some other people for stepping out of line in the marriages and stuff like that and having kids out of wedlock with the other people, me included, but... Uh, you know, in that life at that time, he's still bragging about it, that he did it. How could you be causing an officer by doing that? You know, uh, just that there's many infractions that he did uh, breaking causing an officer rules. So he's causing an officer his way. He killed off the record, right? What happens, in, let, let's uh, subtract Chin for the moment, because there's always, when you move against the boss, there's always two, there's always only two major questions that you have to answer before you move. Can I hold, uh, what am I going to do with the commission and what's going to happen internally? So you got to worry about your family and then the commission. So we already, you gave me an answer on Chin. If, uh, with the commission. What happens internally though? The, can Sammy call in the 25 captains, sit everybody down and do what John did when Paul was killed and have a vote and say, and, and the captains raised their hand for Sammy. And I don't mean with plotting in the background with people saying, let's vote now, but we kill him tomorrow. I mean, can he get a legitimate vote and get the captains to stand behind him at that time? Yeah, but you, are you saying if he got, went and got permission from the commission or without permission? Well, the but see, the commission's separate from the family. The commission's one thing, but the family's separate. Oh, what John, would the captains have done is what I'm saying. What would the captains have done? Just let me, let me get that. John Gotti, according to the commission, was not a legitimate boss. He was a usurper. And not usurped his own family. He's usurped the commission. He had a death sentence on him with everybody involved. So they played nice with John until they could have got to John. So what you're saying is, I can't answer that, because if he don't go to the commission, the, the, he could call the captains and say, but he's going to go. They know that. They're going to go back to Jimmy and say, all right, John's out of the way. We're going to clip Sammy. We'll get him to a meeting. We'll tell him he's a boss and they'll, they'll clip him. It's easy now. Or if that happens, they sit back, they go like this, and let John's crew go to work on Sammy's crew. They're not going to lay down. His brothers and son and all those guys out there ain't laying down. So he would have had to go to the commission to be able to – he could have called all the captains in. That, I'm not saying that, whatever, but what would have happened with that? Everybody would have went, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you killed another boss without permission? Yeah. They would have ran away from him. Not literally, but in, in their loyalty. No way. Plus, don't forget, he abused Jimmy. He abused their Sonny Ciccone. We're taking their men. He abusing all these guys. They didn't like Sammy. Sure, he could have called them all when, when everybody with guns, like they did with Paul after Paul died. That's not calling your captains in, getting a legit vote. They, it was illegitimate. John was an illegitimate boss in the commission's eyes. That's it. No matter who likes it or don't like it. That's the truth. When you have a death sentence on you for doing something wrong, you're illegitimate. 
Well, I guess I'm let me phrase it another way. The way Vic tried to take the family from the Persicos, and then an all out war goes out because half the family's with the Persicos and half is saying, No, we're with Vic. Does Sammy, does the family, if John, if Sammy kills John, does a civil war start or does the fam and you get a Columbo style infighting? Or do you have a family intact still, and now you're trying to broker something with the commission like John did? John kept the family together. He sent a note to the commission, and he said, this is our administration. Our family is unified. Stand down. Doesn't mean they accepted it, but the family was together with John before that vote that came later on where they said, okay, we will recognize you as the boss. And Chin said, well, someone's going to have to pay down the road. Can Sammy have done the same thing? There you go. There's my answer. See what he did, you just said? That's my argument. What Chin tell him? He was a legit boss. He was not legit. Chin tells him to his face, supposedly, somebody's going to have to pay for this down the road. What's he telling him? We know it's you. I just can't prove it this minute. Or we'll get to you later on. That's what he's telling him. So you go back to the Persico thing. Uh, Persico was alive. He was in prison. The commission never took him down as boss. You had another usurper trying to get there. The reason why they accepted Vic is because there was no war yet. The war starts trying to take out some guys in the Persico faction to get, uh, with, don't forget who instigated that was a guy named John Gotti. <laughs> right? Another killing the boss without permission. Even though Junior's in jail, he tried to get all the captains to vote him down. Kill who you can and vote them down. And then go to the commission and say, we got no boss. But they have to approve that. So there's, there, you know, there's, it's a lot of hypotheticals. But yes, there would it would have it would have devolved into a war between the Queens guys and the Brooklyn guys. No question. Okay. That was my question. Does the family have a, another banana split, like the Joe Bonanno thing when they had their split? The Columbos had their split. John didn't have a split. Remember that. John killed the boss and kept everything together. Columbos couldn't do that. Bonanos couldn't do that. They had an internal war and said, fuck you, we ain't standing behind you. And that's what I'm wondering about Sammy. So you're saying. Nope, it's a Colombo Bonanno style thing. That's how that would have ended. No, but it it was together with with band aids. It was window dressing together. Frank De Chico dies. Eddie Lino dies. Bobby Boriello dies. The, the, again, uh, ad nauseum, say Bobby Matter was talking about killing Jeannie and John. Sure, he had the captains. Everybody came. Well, who's going to defy it at that time? You know, you're going to die. But there were murders that happened. One that's the most compelling and the most telling murder out of all of these. They get arrested. They're dead to right in that case in December of, of uh, 90, right? Sammy, John, Frank Lowe, and Tommy Gambino, which is an outlier, had nothing to do with any of this stuff. Somebody dies after that. They're not finished the commission. They killed Bobby Boreal a godly loyalist, an acting captain for John Jr. Somebody really close to the Gotties. It doesn't end. They know. Everybody knew they couldn't beat that case. There's tapes that were played, like we talked about all the tapes. The, the, every family, everybody in every family knew he was. Unless they fixed the jury, you weren't, you weren't going to uh, win that case. Why kill Bobby? Why? Why? Because the vendetta didn't end. You don't think his son would have got clipped? Jeez. They could have clipped Junior, they would have. In time, they would have. No question in my mind. Yeah, you said that before, that if gas doesn't flip, Junior's dead. Didn't you say that before? Yeah. There's more guys dead. Maybe me. Who knows? I was At that time, I was a godly loyalist. Don't forget, when does Eddie Lino get killed? Fall of 90. But you see, you're still, like, you're still making my point that, see, these deaths were coming from the commission, from another family. But internally, 
It wasn't like the Columbos shooting bullets at each other. The Bananos shooting bullets at each other. The Gambinos weren't shooting bullets at each other. That's what I'm trying to ask you as far as Sammy is concerned. Are, are they shooting bullets at each other? Like John wasn't, when John took over, it wasn't happening. Yeah, but what Paul had, what crews did he have? This is what I'm telling you. Who's going to kill me me? This is what I'm telling you. What crew did Paul have after him and Tommy are dead? He had nobody. He, he thought maybe he had the, uh, the, the, the Italians from 18th Avenue. They were in the drug business. They laid it down. They figured that they, John, John's brother's pitcher of drugs or all pitcher of drugs. Say, it's kumbaya time. They ain't going to push that. Why should they? Now, what, what, again, another huge hypothetical. Would the guys in Sicily be angered and want to send guys over to Club John? Yeah, maybe in time. Maybe. But John, Paul had nobody. After he killed Tommy, that's why Tommy had to go. He, he couldn't mount anything from Staten Island. If the Tommy's gone, who's going to mount anything? There's nobody left that was going to push. So let's take it in that the commission went to Jimmy Brown. Right? They sent somebody to go talk to Jimmy. Go call Jimmy in and says, sit back, don't worry about it. Be paid. Pas chance. Pas chance. Time. Have patience. We're going to get to this. We'll fix this. And Frankie dies four months later. So yeah, it, it's 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 a it's a factor here that John had huge problems. The major factor was Sammy Grabano. He's the factor here because he was he was going to get burnt from the inside, and John Cena coming. Too late. What about, what about the Cherry Hill guys, Johnny's crew, John Gambino's crew? Don't forget that case too. That case, they went to prison. And where was Patsy Conti at this time? He had a he had a crew, didn't he? Like a night, like a tough crew. They were doing nothing. No, they were all a bunch of old men. All the Frankie Dad bunch of okay, nothing. The rest of the crews was zero, zero. As far as killers, I'm not talking about money and earners. Huge money, guys. You think they're really going to step out when they're worth, they're worth tens of millions? They ain't going to step out. All right. I got to go to club once a week. Okay. I watch my ass. I ain't going to prison. I don't want to die. So let me ask you then, so, because, you know, for the viewer, because they just hear a mafia, gangster, made guy, and they just apply it to oh, scary, scary guys. A family, your family was what, 225 people or something? 255, 260. Okay. So of 260 made guys in a family. And and I, I asked you, because Sammy answered this question before too, about you got the what he called a workhorse crew. Those are the guys you call and go fight the war when it's a problem. Out of 265 guys, what would you say a number, approximate number, is the guys who a family might have of Guys that can go on the mattresses, 20, 30? No, not in our group. A lot of murderers in our group. We had a big number. We had 260. But made guys and associates, forget about it. 50, 60, maybe more. Okay. Yeah. Look, at one time, look at Roy DeMeo's group. His associates, they were butchers. And you know, and the rest of that crew, just this group. Then you had Sammy's crew. Then you had John's crew. John had about 12 guys at one point, all murderers, <laughs> right? The numbers add up. You know, Frankie Chico's guys, the guys in the Bronx. Uh, Joe Watts, Tom Bellotti, his crew. That guy, you can just keep going. There's a lot of murderers in that family. Legit <laughs> murderers. Well, let me put it this way. I heard Frank, I heard um, Franchese talk about this when he was asked, like, being like the fear factor of other guys. And he said, listen, when you're called, you go. That's just the way it is. But do you think the guys, those the guys you're talking about, do you think like the guy himself, who's a guy like Sammy, a guy like Domeo or whomever, you think they know the difference between, or they even think it like, I'm a pit bull, you're a lab, you're a Labrador, you don't want these problems. Like, do you think guys know like, I'm the guy? You guys are a bunch of, uh, <laughs> like, do guys think like that? Like, 
Yeah. I'm the tough guy. You got this family needs me. Without me, there ain't no family. Plenty of guys like that, big like that. They okay. do. It. But I, I'll give you a little example. I was in Paul's club, uh, and it was packed. And Louis Molito was there. And Louis Molito, he, he really he comes with dungarees, his jeans, and you know, a pair of boots or whatever. Once in a while, he dress up. Uh, and we're sitting on a table close to where the bar was. And there was a whole bunch of Johnny Rickabones guys. We're, we're all real soft guys. Nice guys, but really soft. Uh, and when I say soft, they, uh, most of these guys never even had a swing out. I really mean that. And they all want to get straightened out. Of course, Johnny Rickabone was a, his family goes way back in time in the Gambino family. I told you about his son. They went and straightened his son out, uh, Sammy. Nice guy, really good guy. Big money, but beef was put up. So anyway, we're looking at the bar, and uh, I see Louie looking, and he goes, see, the, uh, the guy's still alive. I won't mention his name. He was talking out of his side. He was mouth growling like, making all kinds of gestures. He just got straightened out. Louie shakes his head. He goes, see that guy? He's a fucking paper lion. And there's the conversation. There's the mind. There's the actor. I'm the real guy. Look at this. Like, Look at this fucking guy. Who's he kidding? You know, he's talking out of his mouth, growling it at the bar. And Louis quiet, nice, want to laugh, low belly thing. So Louis six and smokes the cigarettes like this. That's the guy. And he knows that. All the guys that, that do that, that do that work, knows what and who they are. And everybody else around them that are the paper lions or the politicians or the actors. Of course they know that there's a difference. And the boss knows the difference for sure. <laughs> so I assume they know. But let me ask you the flip side of it. Does the Jackie D'Amico, Tommy Gambino types, do they know that they're a paper lion? Yeah, they know their place. They know their place. Everybody knows their place. Look, there's not – go, I'll go back to I, – I think where you're going. If, if I had to go sit down in the beef, if I was made at the time, because I wasn't when Roy got killed. If I had to go sit down with Roy on a beef, I'm not thinking this guy's chopping people up. That's not why I'm sitting with him. That don't cross my mind. It may sound like, you know, I cooperated. It may sound disingenuous, but that's the truth. Nobody that I ever knew said, oh, I got to go sit down with this guy. Oh, I'm scared. A wise guy saying that? You better go to Idaho. You know what I mean? You have to defend your your, your, your position and your argument, you know, it, it, the way you should, no matter what the guy did, does for the family. Right is right, wrong is wrong, for the most part. You know, your closeness, proximity to a boss or your captains or the, the power base of the family could get you a bad decision. And at times it has, could get you a bad decision. But still, you're not going to, in fear of talking to somebody because they're, they're a worker in the crew. Okay. It's a good show. Think so? Oh, it's great. This is going to spark conversation. Well, it's been a long time coming. We've been promising them. And uh, this is, the again, this is my my feelings on the like, preponderance of the evidence then and now that I've seen. Um, and it's a, a historical point of the Gambino family of... Uh, what transpired and did not transpire and why. So I really enjoyed this. I've been wanting to say this for a while. I just uh, let some, we, you know, when we got together and collaborated, we didn't want to put this out front. We want to let a, a lot of evidence, a lot of everything unfold first so everybody could digest those tapes. And, hey, the gift that keeps on giving, that guy in Arizona, he opens his mouth, it's, he just keeps... You're making us our, our information more solid. Every time he opens his mouth, he's wrong. Do you think Sammy really did feel betrayed by John when he heard the tapes, or he just used that as an excuse to do what he like? But like, I I just wonder like before he does what he does, do you think he really is feels like this guy? I've been so loyal to him. I've been so. He, and he betrayed me. Do you think he really felt betrayed? No way. He felt caught. 
The guy goes in front of a judge, Your Honor, this won't happen. No, never again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and you'll never see me in this courtroom again. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, he was caught. He knew he was caught. John exposed him on those tapes with Frank. Sammy knew he had zero way out, even if he beats the case, which is impossible. It's not happening. Sammy flipped because Sammy didn't want to be in jail. That's it. Again, it, you know, we go back to so, so many things, the stories he tells about the, under the bus. And, uh, why didn't he just beat John up when he heard the first tape? If he was really willing to stand up, he wanted just an apology for John. That would have made it all. He would have been doing life right now, right? He would have been looking for gas pipe. Uh, cut the stroke. He would have been doing life right now. I call Bullstein on that. He wasn't doing life. That's his excuse. It sounds good. It was a great sound bite. Hurt my feelings. I'm the victim. You're the victim. Yeah. You couldn't stop one of those murders. Yeah. Of your guys. Yeah, okay. You couldn't talk John down. A guy didn't kill any of his guys. You let him kill your guys. Yeah, okay. He's got the world believing his victim. He's a victim. He's a disgrace right now to Cosa Nostra, uh, not just because he flipped. Uh, that's one reason you're a disgrace. But the second reason is everything he said to try to take down a guy and other people in that life that died in prison. He makes punks and dogs out of them and low lowlifes. When he him himself has his own words out of his own mouth, his words out of his own mouth, it shows what kind of low life he is. So, uh, I, you know, my my reasoning for being here is uh, personal to Gravano. Not personal, right, that he did something to me. But personal to this, to everybody else, including John. And, and uh, we're all criminals here. I'm not, I'm not glorifying John as, a, as the criminal. That, uh, you know, he shouldn't be held accountable to society for what he did. Like everybody else that's in that life. And anybody else is a criminal. We all got to be held up to society as for what we are and what we did. Uh, but it seems like Gravano makes everybody else a victim or to just berates them and their families. I know I said this probably half a dozen times now, but this guy has no right to take away what John lived and died for with all his mistakes. Sammy has no right to try and strip this guy's medal. Zero. The guy has zero redeeming qualities. He has the propensity to subject people, to manipulate them into anything that gets him a dollar in his pocket or exert control over them, their personal lives. He just, you can never believe what comes out of this guy's mouth. Yeah, he does tell some facts. People did die, yeah. It's the rest of the story that stinks. There's only one constant in all the stories. One person that's hanging around. Him. It's him. You know, that's the one thing I would say. I've seen very few people, and usually the people who can't, are they got some kind of mental condition of some sort um but i don't see it doesn't matter you can read sammy's book you can listen to every show he's ever put out i have never saw sammy say he was wrong for something ever i if, unless someone can find me a clip but he's always the victim it's always somebody else it's never him and i always say this anytime you're always the hero in your own story you're lying. Anybody, forget about Sammy. Anybody, if you're sitting down with a broken person that's on the streets and lived their whole life on, on, in poverty, up and down, uh, the cheating on every woman, the wear that beat that, everything, and you and and you're talking to them, 
and every bad story is what someone did to them. These are these are some of the worst type of people you'll ever come across, ever. Because they don't even feel bad. They don't even feel like shame or guilt or nothing because they have a justification for everything that they do wrong. And that's a scary person, a person that can justify doing anything. Well, I want to give you something that's just fast forward. It has nothing to do with the mob as far as what Sammy did. Just to tell you how this guy is so creative with his imagination. He got a call from, uh, or however they set it up, for Megyn Kelly, right? Every, I, just about everybody knows who Megyn Kelly is, right? And she asked him a question about the uh, the movie with James Caan, who was called The Godfather, and how he got the part. I watched the clip, stunned, stunned, that he said he was in the room when they came and asked for permission for James Caan and they wanted James Conn in the movie. And he was in the room when asked, and would, would Carmine Price go? And they were going to go to Joe Colombo for permission. It's a lie. This I don't know how this Megyn Kelly has him as a, as, as a legitimate source, a legitimate reference. They have her bullsteined pretty good. Because this never happened, ever. He dreams these things up. And Megyn Kelly says it, and whoever watched it believes her, because she's credible in most people's eyes, right? To say that, wow, Sammy Gravano got James Conn the part. Uh, you know, he was there when they asked for permission to get, get James Conn the part in the golf club. Wow, Sammy was there. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. It's, it's creative fantasy. I mean, this guy's... And this, this is what I'm, why I'm bringing it out. I'm sticking on this. Is if he can lie about something like this, what else do you lie about? Everything. Lies about everything. I don't even know if Sammy was a made guy at that point. The Godfather came out in what seventy one. Oh, he was with the Columbos. Yeah, seventy one. I think the Godfather one came out. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that they started production in 69 and it came out in 71. So that means that negotiation, though, because they didn't even start the filming yet. It came out two years later. I think but, it was like that would have been like 69. But I watched The Offer. And it was pretty good. It was based on making The Godfather, Coppola, and old uh, Bob Evans and uh, Al Ruddy. Al Ruddy, by the way, was very friendly with Joe DiCicco, Joe Butter, as everybody knows him. Very friendly. He wanted me to. When I went out to California, he wanted to call me to introduce him to him. And I says, I ain't taking him with me. He's crazy, brother. So, but uh, if Joe Butter told that story, I would say, yeah. But it's not the way it happened. I, I think it was Bob Evans that would not allow anybody else to play that part but Sonny. If I remember from the movie. I think it was that, that was one of the things that they negotiated that James Kahn had to be in the movie. So that, that, before anything, and there was never a part asked for that James Conn had to play a part by the mob. Because they, don't forget, in the beginning, they didn't want it to happen in the movie. The actors are already just in place, most of them, for the, for the movie. So it, it's just fantasy. But that little lie that he could create in his brain and spew it to the whole world through Megyn Kelly is just one of Gravano's manipulative. He's good, everybody. The guy's good. He told it like, if again, if it wasn't me sitting here, I'd say, wow, this, guy, this guy's good. He's a liar. 1972 was when that movie came out. It was released March 14th, 72, was when it was released to theaters. So, and you know, the, those negotiations were going on in, so probably in the 70, in the 71. So Sammy was a small fry at that point. He wouldn't, I can't even see how what his voice would be needed for. What approval do you have? You're not on record with Tato or nobody yet. <laughs> no, he, said he was on record with the Colombo guys. Uh, at, at, but he, was, he wasn't anybody yet at that point, even if you're on record with them, but you're not in an info. He might have killed Jack in 70. I, I, got, I may be wrong, 
But it was 70, 71 when he killed Jack, uh, Joe Colucci, excuse me. I'm not Jackson's son. Joe Colucci. Uh, do a quick search. Could just Joe Colucci, put his name and see when he was murdered by Sammy uh, on orders from the Colombo family. 1970. Yeah, there you go. So right around that time period. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> All right. Good show. Uh, this will be interesting live. Guys, you know, guys, what you can do that's helpful is don't type all your questions. When you're watching this, put your, um, maybe make some notes on your phone or something and be prepared for the live. And if you bring your, have your questions, when you put them in the comment section, Michael might type back to you or something, but bring those questions to the live so we can have a really interactive live. You don't, if you have a question about this, save that question for the live show. And I'll say it right now. So this will be such an interactive live because I know there's so much theory and things going on in this show. We'll run the lives over if we have to for these for these shows so we can get, get everybody's questions answered. Um, so that's all we got. Michael, close it out. Well, this is uh, something, that, again, that I wanted to do. And RJ uh, was one of the first questions that we talked about when it came to Gravato and John is why and why not. So I think uh, we satisfied our curiosity on both ends here. And yeah, yeah. We put it out to the world for this little piece of history that we we'll want to share. And uh, I really appreciate everybody being here on Patreon. The Patreon AZ family is great. These guys interact with each other all the time on here. I love it. And uh, good to see you guys come together, guys and girls. We have some girls and we have some women here. Uh, that are pretty good. They're, they're good. They know their stuff. So uh, God bless everybody. Be well. Be safe. Keep smiling. Most important, smile. I'm going to add up my score, but can you give me a grade from A, B, C, D? What, what would you grade my assessment? Oh, you're, you're B plus. B plus? Okay, that's a great score. I'll take that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Take care. Peace and love. Ciao.